Hey, worship leaders, pastors, and friends. Brandon Dempsey here with Worship Team Training. Thanks so much for coming back. And want to welcome you to my new studio setup here in Austin, Texas. And it's great to be back with you. It's been a while since we've done a video podcast. We are going to be continuing some new things and curating videos just for you. In the meantime, we're also working on a new series for our audio podcast, which you can find presently anywhere that you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Look for the Worship Team Training Podcast. In the next few weeks, we'll be unveiling a new series with new friends, topics, and guests. So I can't wait for that to come out. Right now, I want to come to you to talk about one critical thing that I think will be helpful for all of us as worship leaders, especially those of us who've been starting out. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been leading worship for uh, maybe over 25 years. I started when I was young and, and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of things that I didn't think I would, that I didn't want to, and I'm glad that I did. So today I want to talk to you about what new worship leaders struggle with the most. Now think back, no matter how long you've been leading worship, maybe it's been a week, maybe it's been 10, 20, 30 years, but think back at the initial point when you started, what were some of the roadblocks that you experienced? What were some of the great things that you've learned that really catapulted you to that next level? I think for all of us, there's no doubt our journeys are different, our experiences are different, and who we learn from are way different. So I want to address some things from the perspective of what would be a struggle for new worship leaders. And I think that this could still be a good refresher for those of, those of us who've been leading for a while because I'm just sharing you my perspective and I find great joy and education when I look at other worship leaders and pastors to figure out what they've done and what worked for them, what didn't. So let's talk about number one, leading in front of people. Leading in front of people can be a huge struggle for new worship leaders and even older worship leaders. I think that there is the number one complication of uh, learning to be in front of people, just, just being in front of people, not even playing an instrument, not even singing. And then when you combine that with your craft, no matter what it may be musically, you're having to do both. You're having to perform and I mean that in the logistical sense, and you're having to do that in front of others that either you know very well or you don't know, especially guests that come to your church. They don't know you, you don't know them. And it could be even um, people that you work with and staff who don't know you that well, but maybe just a few years. There's still always that struggle. There's that element of surprise. There's the anticipation. There's also the what ifs. Uh, <laughs> like we've been talking about this past week, on our other site, Confessions of a Worship Leader, we've been talking about the fear of failure and why that's so important because we are not to fear the failure, but rather embrace it. In fact, I say we are to embrace our failures because when we do, it puts us at the bottom, it puts us at zero and to gain a perspective of going up, not basically not going down, but you know, knowing what our insecurities are, what know, knowing what our weaknesses are, and what can we do about them instead of just hanging our heads low during a service and thinking, or before the service, well, I'm not up to snuff or I'm not up to speed with what I should be. Well, none of us are, really, when you think about it. I mean, as long as I've been leading worship, um, there are still things that I'm learning. There are still things that are brand new. And it has to be because I want to learn. Now, if I cut myself off and I don't want to learn anymore, and I don't want to take feedback or, you know, understand how I can improve, then the other stuff, weaknesses don't matter to me because I think I've got it all figured out. Do you know worship leaders like that or musicians where they think they got it all figured out? Or they look like they don't want to uh, appear weak in front of people? Because I'll tell you, most leaders will see that as a, most leaders will, will find that as a weakness which I'm telling you is rather a strength. And so leading in front of people brings out all different kinds of worms from that can. But I say that what we can do about it by leading in front of people, 
would be understanding who we are, understanding that failure is just a part of everyday life, really. And if you're any good musician would, would even tell you that mistakes are commonly made. And there, there's nothing to say that a musician or a professional singer should never understand their weaknesses because we all have them. And in fact, what makes a good musician and a good singer are those who handle the mistakes professionally, that when they come, uh, they know what to do. And, and quite honestly, that's what we're trained to do as musicians. We are trained to not just, not only perform well, but to handle all the mishaps that way that may happen along the way, because they will happen. So leading, leading people with your craft, I say is, is a big struggle and learning how to understand the areas that you can overcome are going to pay huge dividends the next time when you lead worship. Number two, working with the pastor. Working with the pastor, that's a huge one. And I can hear most of you like um, breathe deeply when I say that because working with the pastor is, is different from just a normal boss because it's somebody that you, well, you should be worshiping with. It's somebody that you would spend hopefully in prayer time with, someone that you can even do life with. Um, maybe not all the times, and that's okay too, but what's your pastor like? What, what makes them tick? What are the things that, um, that they're inspired by during the week? And, and, and what are some, I think, productive ways that you can partner with your pastor? And typically when we start out, as new worship leaders, we don't think about the partnering aspect. We just think about, well, he does the preaching, I do the music. She does, uh, she wants me to do music while she wants to do the speaking, and no matter what. Uh, our, the jobs can be kind of cut out that way, and that's fine too, but I have found that partnering with your pastor can be your biggest strength because it's somebody that you're doing worship with and in, in leading others in the same room and leading people during the week offline. So I say learning to work with, you know, they got their own failures, right? We just talked about what are ours when we lead worship in front of people. Well, pastors, they have their own struggles. They have their own fears when they get up and preach before others. And I think that's an actual great equalizer because if I can look at the pastor and say, you know what, um, they have weaknesses just like I do. They look different and maybe we're sure different in age and maybe they're more experienced than me, but that doesn't take away the fact that we're both human and we both have our struggles when it comes to leading a church. So I try to find things that I can learn from the pastor, such as, you know, what makes them a good speaker? What makes them a good organizer? Um, and maybe if they're weak in some areas, you're going to find their weaknesses also. But then I look at the, that other half of the little, well, when they encounter their weaknesses, how do they overcome them? What are some things that they do behind the pulpit that strengthen the way that they speak? Because if I can learn from that, that's only going to better me as a worship leader, but it's also going to better me as one of their staff members. So I say working with the pastor is huge because that's when you look at your, your hours during the week, right? You're working with your pastor um, out of your 60 hour work week, you're working, you're working with them for what, maybe 50 hours out of 60, maybe a little bit less. You're only leading worship for what the two, three, four hours, depending on how many services that you have only for that given time frame, And then also for rehearsal, um, you're without your pastor, but during the week you are with them. So when it, it's time to get on board for a, a worship service, I think that's when everything starts to turn over. And I look at it as, well, wow, the work that I've done with the pastor during the week, that's really set me up for a success because I've been learning from them. And even the things that maybe, let's say, I don't know if you get along with your pastor or not, don't let that be a barrier. Still try to find humility within yourself to learn to get along with them, even if they are different. And you know, I've, I've served with pastors that even told me, Brandon, you know what? I don't want to spend a lot of time with you during a week. I just want us to be in our own corners and do our craft, do our work. Well, I could see some merit into that, but then I also see that as a huge deficit because when 
people see us leading worship together, right? We're really the unified front. So I say be unified in all that you do with your pastor, regardless of mistakes, regardless of differences that you may have, you're going to have them. So also don't try to mirror yourself to the pastor uh, to make everything be like a match made in heaven. And when um, dreams don't work out, everything fails. Not true. You have to roll the punches no matter what. Uh, you're good at what you do. The pastors are great at what they do. So learn how to be unified in the things that you can do together. Third point, working with the band. This is a just as hard as working with the pastor. But no, maybe your band is not a bunch of pastors. Uh, they're not your bosses of your job. But instead of one person you're having to work with, you have what, maybe three, four, eight, 14. And all of these people now that are in the same room, you're the one having to lead them. And I think by, this is, this is one thing that really hit me. One thing that that can become a, a huge barrier when we lead our worship teams is we look at those within the team. Are they older than us? Are they more experienced than us? Uh, do they have more tenureship in the church? Uh, do they have more life experience than we do? You know, those things can happen very easily. And then that could leave, I've heard many worship leaders have come to me saying, Brandon, you know what? Um, I feel like the, the lead guitar player, he's been on tour with, you know, on the road playing with bands. And now I don't know how to lead a person of that high caliber. I had others that have come to me saying, hey, but I don't know how to deal with this person who knows more than me. And I'm afraid that they may try to take the band over or, you know, many different answers uh, to that, that I can help them with. I, I try to speak into the same element that I do with a pastor. Well, what can you learn from them? Don't be afraid just because somebody knows more than you. In fact, it's actually better that they know more than you. And here's why. Because it is always good to surround yourself with people who are better than you because you're going to help, you're going to lean on them in the ministry. And what makes the ministry great is your people. It's not you. It's not you doing everything yourself. But let your experience on the road guitar player play the most complicated part. Uh, and you may be saying, yeah, but Brent, I wish that I had a, an on-tour guitar player. Yeah, you're right. I do too. Um, but if you have a pianist that knows more music theory than you do, if you have a vocalist who has trained in vocal classes and maybe they even have a degree, learn from them. Don't be afraid. You know, Ask them, hey, what, what makes that vocal part work for you? Or what are some warm-up exercises that I can do. Uh, how can I expand my range? If I'm a guitar player, um, you know, learn about like simple things, like what strings do you use and why do you use them? Um, where do you like to play mostly on the fretboard? And why is that important to you? Um, ask your piano player, hey, can you explain to me what a C major seven really is versus a C minor seven or whatever? But you'll learn a lot within your people because again, if they're better than you, it's only gonna strengthen the things that you do. And so by working with the band that way, it also helps the band know that, hey, this worship leader person doesn't have it all together and I can follow them. They're not trying to make it all about them. They're trying to make it about us and the team. And the more you do that, you're going to come out winning with everything that you do, even with the failures, no matter what. And plus, people will see you as approachable because you are helping them. Fourth point, organization. This is a big one. When we want to lead worship, right, we have to pick out songs within a set. And I know a lot of you already know this already, but you'd be surprised how many worship leaders really don't know. They may plan the music and the songs at the last minute. Look, if you're up on Planning Center Online and Loop Community and you got all your stuff done, well, you know, bless you. I mean, you were like the rare and my hat's off to you, my salute, because that's just awesome. But I will tell you, most worship leaders, are not that organized. Um, and maybe if they are, let's say, because there's two sides of being organized. You have the one side of worship leaders that need to be organized before the worship service, before the rehearsal. That's one. The second one is being organized during the week. Um, we talk about working with your pastor. You know, um, you don't need to be an administrative guru, but your pastor does want you to understand that, you know, how are you spending your time in your office? Um, how are you following up with your worship team members and contacting people in the church? Um, do you have your uh, 
contacts and addresses within order that you can easily find them and to reach out to them when you're praying for them. Do you find it easy to locate music during the week? And why not if you don't? And if you don't have good resources, why not? Why not create a good resource then? Because it's always better, I will tell you, the way that you will lead your worship rehearsals and your services are really based upon your preparation and how well you prepared is going to be how well or poor you execute when you're in those times of leading music. And so I try to do the simple things. And as far as organization, when I'm leading worship, you know, I check my gear, I check my music, I check uh, the songs of, you know, like my memorized parts. I check my equipment. I make sure that things are working. And I arrive up to the church early to make sure that, you know, the channels are working fine. I, I meet with the sound technician, make sure that there's no snafus in the system. Um, also, I run through all the lyrics and words with the projectionist ahead of time before the worship team comes. And you might be saying, yeah, Brandon, I don't have all, all that time. This is where you need to make time. Maybe you need to work something within your job um, to ensure that you can get out an hour early. Um, maybe instead of stopping off at this one place for the grocery store when you know you need to have <laughs> prepare for rehearsal at night, Maybe you should do that the day before. There's little different things that you can change up in your schedule. And I'm not here to tell you how to do it, but I am here to encourage you to look for other ways that you can expand your time during the week and also before rehearsal and before worship service. What about your spiritual organization time? What about how well you take time between you and God before you even step foot off your bed before you step into your car to roll to church or when you get out before you hit the doors. What is your spiritual life like? Because really, you know, I talked about your 60 hour work week. If we were to divide up and like we had 24 hours um, a day, so what, 24 by seven, I don't, you may know the math better than I do, but over 300 hours of life during the week, right? How much of the 300 hours or so are we really spending it with God truly? And not just being busy, and I, and I know that we all get there, but how are you truly spending your time that's important to God? Because it should be important to you. And the way that we become spiritually organized and prepared does help us with everything else that we accomplish and that we set out to do. Uh, number one, our families, our spouses, our pastors, our church, our friends. I mean, you know, all those things funnel down, but it's learning how to um, organize with the main thing to be the main thing, the right one who God is to be in our minds constantly. All right, last point, number five, dealing with church members. Okay, this is a huge struggle for most worship leaders, new or not, right? Because we talk about the different people that enter the room in your worship um, rehearsals in your band, and I didn't talk about personalities to them either, but um, I'll address that here. Now you have a huge room filled with different personalities of people. Uh, they don't like this song. They like this song. Uh, they don't like the way that you look or they didn't like the way that you smiled at them last week or they may love you. They may put their arms around you and just embrace you every time, pray for you. I mean, I've had so many great members that would come to me in the morning and they just say, Brandon, I just want to pray for you right now. And gosh, it would just refresh my soul. Or those that would just put their arms around me. And, you know, it, it just felt so good because I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm leading worship with friends. I'm not leading worship among strangers. I'm leading with worship, leading worship with people that I know and that I love. And it just makes it that much easier. And even if, like we talk about differences of opinion with your pastor, your band, your church members, that's going to happen. So dealing with them, meaning like, you know, you're going to have those. I talk about this a lot on our video and podcast episodes on Confessions of a Worship Leader. And you can check out that page too, confessionsofaworshipleader.com and find our socials. But anyway, a lot of these things I address as far as, you know, how do you really work with those that come to you with complaint? How do you deal with the church member who um, maybe they voice their opinion about the song? It's so easy for us as worship leaders to think, yeah, but I spent all this time this week. I spend all this time in prayer. And then they say this about me or to me. Well, number one, um, so what did they said something to you? 
being a minister, you, you signed up for the job, you're going to have to deal with people no matter what. And that means their weaknesses, their strengths, uh, their likes and dislikes, who cares? But why not can you answer the question? If somebody says, well, why did you choose that song? You know what, it's a good spiritual opportunity for both of you. For instance, if somebody comes to me, I've had this many times, Brandon, why did you choose this one worship song that we hadn't sung in years and I don't know it and I got lost and um, I just don't like it? Then I, I would validate them first and say, you know what, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, and start out with a question, maybe re-ask them and just say, did you, just so I can understand clearly, you wanna know why we did the song because it was confusing. Well, yeah, that's right, Brandon. Okay, because it, it, it tells them that you're really listening. It tells them that you're um, paying attention to what they say. And then you can move on to, you know, asking them, well, well, what is it about the song that maybe you don't like? Or what is it that, well, Brandon, I've already told you, it's confusing to me and, you know, I just don't like the lyrics or whatever. And then you can, you know, there's two ways you can go from here. You can either just simply say, you know what, thanks for your input. I think that's valuable. And um, you know what, we'll, we'll do a better job trying to choose songs that are maybe more familiar. But in this instance, right here, we chose the song because you fill in the blank, you know. So that way you're letting them know that you hear them, but you're also not backing down and you're not being a doormat so they can just roll right over you. But you need to always have a purpose. And, you know, if, if, if somebody comes to me and says, well, Brandon, but why did this happen in worship service? It's okay to not know the answer also. It's okay just to say to them, you know what? I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm gonna find out. And when I do, I'm gonna get back with you. And then next week comes, hey, by the way, um, Mary, you asked me this question. I got an answer for you. How about this? And then you go through it. And then it can be something simple. <laughs> Siri just went off, that was hilarious. But um, it can be something as so simple as it clarifies the question for that person who asked it. And they could think, wow, Brandon really took a lot of time to research that for me. Or maybe their answer can just be something like, you know, hey, Brandon, that provides a lot of background for me that I didn't have. Thanks for that. You know, I, maybe I didn't like that song at the beginning, but um, I'd spent some time looking through the lyrics and it makes sense to me. Or maybe you ask that person, hey, have you really, I know you don't like the song, but have you tried looking at the lyrics? What is it about that song lyric that maybe you don't agree with or you do agree with? Let's, let's talk about that spiritually. I mean, you never know how that, that can just open up. I mean, it can open up huge portals to talk about different um, ways of understanding scripture. And, um, and they, get a, they get a heartbeat from you being their worship leader. Uh, you get a heartbeat from them being the church member and understanding their needs. You never know. That could go off. I've had a church member say to me before, you know what, Brian? I don't like that song because it reminds me and they would just start to tear up and, and, and they would, you know, really express some emotion and say, because I lost this person in my life. And, you know, I didn't think about it before, but that per that song, I have to really work on that. And, you know, I can't tell you it, that how many, how many um, moments of that causes good ministry and how good that is for people to, um, for you to take that time with them because that's what ministry is about. It's not about the music you lead. It's not about the songs that you pick. So I think if we can, if we can wrap up these five points and ask the question, you know, again, how can, wh what can worship leaders do as they struggle with these five things? And I would say, number one, be yourself and uh, be who God created you to be. Follow Him biblically. Learn to do things right, not perfect. And take things as a grain of salt and just learn along the way. Just be you. I mean, it, the more that I do that and I don't try to perfect things and I make it more about God and less about myself, I'm always on the right track doing the way that, doing what God tells me to do. So I encourage these five points with you. I hope that they help because I know that I'm always learning and relearning them and adding to them or deleting. You know, maybe this doesn't work so much for me anymore, but this does. So I hope that this brought you to a point of expanding your thought and your heart 
So you can take this into the next time when you lead with your pastor during the week or on stage with your band or your church member as you're leading them in worship. So my, um, my thanks to you for joining me on this video here. Uh, be sure to check us out, worshipteentraining.com. Look out for the brand new podcasts that are coming and also our other content that we offer. And thanks so much for being here today. Remember, it's not about being perfect, but it's about allowing the Lord Jesus to lead you both in life and in worship. See you next time soon.